What does S and O mean? Really not helpful. Is to the right open? Or to the left? I have no idea. I, feel, I know I'm supposed to know this because it's like common sense stuff. This feels like it's open. I don't like quarter turn knobs like this. Give me a full turn so I can crank it down or pull it on out. Quarter turn? Not very useful. And it's bent. A little bit crooked so I can't really tell if I'm opening this or closing it. I feel like this is probably closed and this is probably opened. Does S mean shut as in shut off and O means open? So that's open and that's closed? I have no idea. So I'm gonna find out. Hey. What's up garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's so beautiful out. Spring is finally here. Hi Turbo. Hey Turbo, isn't it exciting? Finally time for spring. Hey it's spring Turbo, oh boy. Oh, you're just going right down there, huh? I have to get the water turned on, which is, <laughs> you have to do that up there. I don't usually enjoy this part of spring, but it only takes a little while. That's not true. It takes forever. It never goes right. There's always something that needs to be changed or replaced out there. Reach up in the ceiling here and turn that on. I don't hear water running out there, so that's that's a good sign. I don't think there's water splashing all over the place. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> what's going on down there? I don't want to know what's going on down there. Come on. I'm so excited to move plants outside and to water things. Oh, so fun. So much fun. All right. Come back over here, give this a turn. Have water. Awesome. I just have to get these hooked up so that the water runs around to the backyard and then, you know, do the, do the things. Have a look in here. This, these things are usually what I have to replace. The gaskets get all messed up. They get dirty on the inside. I'm going to find some plumber's tape and get the hoses hooked up. Go out to the backyard and start playing around with some plants. This is one of those things where there's usually something that goes wrong. There's normally a leak somewhere. Not seeing anything though. That's surprising. What's that? <laughs> you get some water turbo? Water pressure is not that great, but <laughs> better than nothing. What is that? Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh fun. <laughs> Lots of bubbles need to get worked out of there. And that pressure, that's not quite normal. Go ahead and shut that off. See what's going on there. I found the problem right here. Have a kink here and then four others. And when I tried to get them out, the hose broke in a few spots. Just the outer coating though, it's not leaking. I do think I need to replace this though. This was like the cheapest hose I could find. This runs from where I just was on the other side of the house and comes through and under everything and connects to all this stuff over here. But hey, there's water and there aren't leaks. So off to a good start. Say it's probably safe to go ahead and get these windmill palms uncovered. He found a block of ice in the bottom of a pot. Best moment of his life. I think the coldest temperature this week is 38. These definitely don't need to be covered them up. Covered them up. I don't need to have these covered. When well, it's going to be that mild, they're totally fine. I'm trying to be thorough here. There have been times when I've pulled this frost cloth off and just kind of tore it and then knocked pots over and broke them. From forgetting that I had it laying on the cloth, weighing things down, it got down to, I think the thermometer said 13.8, which is just a smidge cooler than I like the windmill palms to go. They can take some cold temperatures, but I prefer them to not since they're potted and more exposed. A lot safer to just cover them up just to be safe. And it was only for one night, so it's not a big deal. I had the sensor in there so I could keep track of what sort of difference was made by having that frost cloth and the lights on there. And it looked like it kept things about four degrees above the outside temperature, which was perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, just to keep them above 15. It seems to be the sweet spot. They're probably going to be happy to be flipped back up. I'm going to be happy to. I don't like looking at them like this. Breaks my heart. Poor palm trees. He is absolutely loving this. This is going to be the first time he's been able to like hang out without that puppy gate. I have to see how well he does with all that extra stimulus with plant things. I don't think that he can play with the plants too. That's much better. They need some pruning and some cleaning, but that's normal. Heck, the entire backyard does. That's what I want to get done this week is just to do lots of pruning and cleaning, get the umbrella back out here and make this space a space I would like to hang out in again. Winter always takes its toll. Did a lot of prep though this year, so it shouldn't be as bad, meaning I did a lot of my cutbacks and a lot of the spring work in the fall and in 
warmer days of winter, so it's really just like from here and over this section. The table needs some tidying, and there are a couple of little planters over there, but mostly it's just right here. Get that looking nice again. Take these frost blankets, get these put, well, I'm not gonna put them away. We'll probably still have some chilly nights. They oddly smell like geraniums. I don't know what that's about. Very strong geranium scent coming off of those. Oh, some things happened at Home Goods and Michaels. I'm not mad about it. Look at this bottle. Isn't that cool? Gonna have fun popping plants in that one. Why are you bugging me? Why are you bugging? Hey, pumpkin. How you doing, butt? How you doing, sweetheart? Did you come out to say hi? You're such a cutie pumpkin. Such a good girl. Yes, you are. I love you. All right, bye, pumpkin. Oh, you just want to show your new toy? Look at that. How cute. I mean, I know it's disgusting because he's had it for, like, 12 hours now. So, obviously, it's filthy. But <laughs> Drinking bunnies, you get it? Because the bunnies and the peeps? Okay, right, there you go, baby. Go get your toy. Also, the most annoying toy I've ever gotten him. The noise. Oh, it's so intense and it never stops. Okay, comment down below to anybody's dogs. Just go nuts. Listen to that. <laughs> I'm sorry if so. Okay, all right, that's enough of that. Very surprised it doesn't bother Pumpkin more. Because that's one of those noises that usually makes her flee and run. Hi, hey, honey. Such a good... Okay. I just realized I did a bad thing. A really, really, really bad thing. I forgot to unplug the pump. Hopefully that didn't break the pot. This should be okay. Because it's like a fiberglass material, but that one can always glue it back together and, you know, use like cement or something if I need to just, oh, oh, that was a big oops. Looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? Because it was that one night, I just didn't think about it. The fountain had been running for a few weeks. It hasn't been terribly cold and, um, no. It does look pretty cool, but I don't really care about that if it ends up breaking the pots. So like I said though, I can put them back together if that happens. Chances are everything's okay. The pump's still running. I could hear it running. So things should be all right here. A couple of the Akubas are looking sad. We had some cold nights. This is the only year I didn't bring them in. Usually, just like with the windmill palms, I move the Akubas in when it drops below 15 because, well, they're in pots and they're a zone seven. So keeping them above like five degrees, usually a good idea just to keep them looking their best. They aren't the fastest growers, but I figured the spot was fairly sheltered and it is. But these two right here, Big difference between those and those. Eh, nothing some TLC and some water won't fix. You don't know until you try, and I tried, and well, I didn't really learn much because two of them look fine and two of them not so much. This one's raised up. I should have put that down on the ground. That was dumb. I should have set that down because it's totally exposed being up like that, but the one right next to it doesn't look that much better. So chances are that there's a nice little warm pocket right there. They're not dead. They'll be okay. Turbo. What you got? Oh, you found a Kong. Ow, Turbo. You better watch out. That time of year, things are just gonna look crummy while they start to wake up and get going. You dork. I love him so much. All right. Yes, you get a treat, even though you've been outside maybe 15 times in the last 10 minutes. Mm, do your stretches. Mm, do your stretches. Good. Well, that's just lying down. Sleep. Okay, sleep. That's roll over. What's wrong with you today? All right, lie down. Okay, there we go. It's acceptable. Now... <laughs> you start grabbing some plants, moving a few things outside. Just a few. It's not warm enough to move very much out there. You think you've been helping? You have not been helping. You've not been helping at all. Alright, well you did a good job picking up that pine cone for me. First load of plants. Okay, maybe the only load. I don't know how much I'm actually going to bring out. I remembered, as happens every single year, usually the last week of March, which will be the week after this video comes out, there's a cold snap. Almost every year, so I don't really want to bring anything out that may not be okay with that. So I have the pindu here, some fetsias that are looking rough because they got a lot of cold on them, but they can take it. Mediterranean fan palm here, which I accidentally forgot to bring inside when it got down to 13.8 and it wasn't covered, but it was in the driveway under some shelter and it's okay. They're not so bad with the cold as long as they aren't wet, particularly in the crown and it was under an overhang. So seems okay to me. There's, you know, some discoloration in there, but it's still firm. Should be fine. Mainly the mule palms. They're still in the garage. I just, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I should probably wait another week, but we'll give it a few days to get to the middle of the week and see what the extended forecast looks like. Right now I'm going to keep these in the gorilla carton, though I can move them into the shade and move them around a little bit so I'm just shocked. We got the umbrella out, get the table cleaned up, have the seating area out here again. 
Ah, I feel so good to have the umbrella out on the table. I still, I still need to cut the tag off of that. Went through so many umbrellas over the last two years that I didn't want to take the tag off because I was just paranoid something was going to happen with it. But this last one, it's really a much more sturdy, higher quality umbrella. It's been holding up fairly well. I need to watch what I say though. Storm season's here. <laughs> Don't want anything to happen to it. This one has a warranty though. It should be more resistant to wear and tear, hopefully. Just having the umbrella out here just makes me feel so much better. Much more inviting. Obviously, I mean, this is a disaster. <laughs> need to get that cleaned up, but that's not a big deal. That only take a few minutes. What you looking at? What you looking at, Turbo? Is your friend out there? Turbo just saw a whole bunch of deer for the first time. Seven deer went running through the front yard. Y'all know how I feel about that. This turned itself back on. I, I did not do that. Don't know why it's running, but a lot of the ice melted. It's really foamy, really gross, pretty nasty. And there's still some ice in there. I'm just gonna let it run. I turned it off and it turned back on, so I assume it's just going to do that again. And since the water's moving, I'm not that concerned about it, but ew, right? Know what I'm doing tomorrow. That's gonna be gross. I never enjoy the first clean out of the year. Turbo, you need to show up. You showing everybody what you did? You see this? Look, look at all that. Muddy paw prints all the way down the stairs. Yeah, you did that. He and his friend were outside playing last night and didn't see they were running through the mud. Oh, good morning, Toby. It's a beautiful day, isn't it, Toby? Baby Toby. What was that about? Did you do something? Did you do something? I don't think so. No, you just want belly rubs. Such a sweetheart, Toby. I woke up today so excited to go outside. It's another gorgeous day. It's supposed to be in the 60s and 70s all week. I don't know if I said that yesterday. I have no idea. Need to get the pool uncovered. Got to get the sound of the water going. It just ties everything together, especially when things are still looking so brown and sad. And I've noticed the last couple of years, if I got that cover off the pool, right when these grackle birds showed up. They're these little black birds. I'm sure you can hear them. They're horrible. I don't like them. Not a fan. I mean, I love them because of nature and blah, 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 all that stuff. You know, I'm not an animal hater. I can't even bring myself to eat them, but don't like them around the backyard. They like to nest around bodies of water. There's a body of water here, and there's one over there, and there's one over there, and there's one over there at that, like, a house down there. So it's a popular area. I'm fine with hosting wildlife to an extent. But they're very messy birds, and they poop everywhere. They particularly bag up their poop and put it in the pool. If their babies poop, it, they drop it in the water. It's just brilliant, genius, because then it's not hanging around. It's in the water so predators can't smell it in the nest. Like I said, I respect them. I've noticed when I get this cover off nice and early, like right around when they show up, and then put a big fountain in the middle that makes a lot of noise, they go and they nest over in that neighbor's yard. <laughs> they're still around, and I still see them, and they're still part of being outside, but not having the nest right by the pool makes a big difference. Does this make, I, this doesn't make me a bad neighbor, does it? I think it might. Well, they could get online and figure it out too. I read something years ago about the grackles and them liking big bodies of water, swampy areas. Although they are a bird that's pretty much everywhere, that tends to be the type of area they like to nest in. So something about that loud noise with the water, they don't seem to appreciate it and it keeps them just a little bit further away. And I don't really even need an excuse. I just, I want to get this cover off. So I'm going to go try and find the little, there's a pipe. Thing. I'm gonna see if I can get this off. I've done it before. Popped back inside for just a moment, came in here, washed my hands, so I remembered, hey, I don't have any sunscreen on. And then I dried my hands off, put my sunscreen in my hand, and the sunscreen was full of cat hair. Because apparently the cat decided that the hand towel, the dish rag, was a good place to lay, and that's what I dried my hands with. This has nothing to do with anything, just thought it was gross and thought I'd share it with you. So I'm gonna go rub this all over my face. I think I got all the hair out of it. It was mostly on my hands, and then I put the sunscreen. It doesn't matter always so hard to get the sunscreen in your skin when you have the stubble on your does anybody else you didn't understand the struggle that that was a tiny pimple and my parrot ripped it off i didn't realize it was there the bird leaned in gave me a little kiss and just <laughs> ripped it right off my face so nice of them to groom me this is the sunscreen that i'm using right now y'all making sure to use your sunscreens gardeners number one tool everybody should be using hey turbo that window Oh, he keeps it so dirty. Come on, Toby, let's go back outside. It's a beautiful day, Toby. Come on. Come on. You're not gonna, you, okay, you're coming, you don't want, you guys are confusing me. Come on, let's go outside. We gotta open up the pool. Get that water moving and go swimming. Have a swimming party, Toby. I probably should have prefaced this with letting everybody know there's not gonna be some kind of big, beautiful pool reveal. That water is going to be pretty nasty. That's the last one. No, I just have to peel it off. 
and fold it up. It's gonna be real stinky. That's why I didn't shave this morning, so I didn't take a shower because I knew I was gonna be doing something disgusting and I was gonna be taking a shower after I did this. It's that time of year, gotta remember, don't shave. Can't get the sunscreen rubbed in all the way. Hey, baby, uh, you having so much fun? Turbo, you're not so fun to have out here when pulling off a pool cover, are you? Nope, nope. He was not a good helper. Oh boy, Turbo. Good boy, you go swimming. Like, good boy. You remember how to get out? There we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Was that fun? Good boy. Good boy. Someone's happy. Holy crap. You better not slide into me or break a knee. <laughs> you hear the splash when he gets in the water? It's so big. Love and life. And the water's not that nasty. There's lots of leaves and stuff in there, but there's no odor. Some years you open it up and the water's like green and gross. It looks green because the liner needs to be replaced. It's all white. It's supposed to be that dark blue color that is up top. Don't shake on me. He's having a great time. When I first let him out after pulling the cover off, he ran around the edges. Didn't quite know what to do and he's slowly got into it. He hasn't been in this pool since like... I don't even know. Probably October, and he was so much younger, so I wasn't sure if he'd remember his swimming lessons, but he seems to remember just fine. That water's cold, but he does not seem to care. You want that? You want it? Go get it. Go get it. Good boy. Good boy, Turbo. Yeah, good boy. If there's nothing in the water, it's not treated. It's just water right now. And it's going to stay that way. I'm not, like, setting the filters and everything up. Somebody else has to do that. I That's out of my wheelhouse don't know how to even do that be gentle turbo turbo hey gentle so it's just gonna look like this with a fountain in the middle it's better than looking at the cover oh and it smells nice still smells kind of salty you going back in go get it go get it don't you knock toby over you be gentle God, the splash look at the wake I'm supposed to be getting a toy and he got distracted by leaves typical doggy you're not even gonna get the toy huh that's fine you don't have to just live your life have fun Burn off some energy. That's what I like to see. He's gonna sleep well this afternoon. Funny story. Remember just a few minutes ago? I was talking about how the grackles, they like that still calm water. So I put the fountain in there and do all the stuff to make the noise and get the, yeah, the pump. I forgot that I threw it away last fall because it was broken. So all I've done is create a very welcoming environment for them. Not the end of the world. There's a new one coming in the mail. Should be here tomorrow. Get that water moving. I also, I was going to leave the water low because the pumps and filtration, none of that stuff in there is running. So there's no reason really to fill it up anymore. But I uh, remembered that I need to get the, there's like a platform floaty thing that goes in there in case any critters fall in. So they can crawl out. I don't want any chipmunks or squirrels or rabbits or birds. I don't want anything falling in there. It doesn't have a way to get out. So I'll have to get the water flowing, get that water level up. But that's all done. And I'm so happy to have it done. It smells nice. So refreshing to have the water out here. It'll be even better when the water is moving and can hear it. In the meantime, something that I really need to get done is getting these artichokes bumped up. I mean, it's overdue. By probably a couple of weeks. I think they will really appreciate being moved into something bigger. So I'm going to get started on that. No, I need to get the hose in the pool. I'll get the hose in the pool and then I'll get started. Multitasking. Not really in the mood for it. I just kind of want to relax. But this could be relaxing. Repotting artichokes. Sounds like fun. It's the next day. Pump's here. Alright, let's see what's going on inside the box. It's just a pump. There isn't a ton to say about it. Whoa, those are some really big fittings. <laughs> really big. This thing's freaking huge. This is the Vivo Sun Waterfall Pond Pump. It's the creme de la creme best pump you can find. Just kidding. It's the cheapest one I could find that would be delivered within a few days. 8,100 gallons per hour. 500. Why does it say keep dry? Why would... That's... No, it needs to go in the water. I don't understand. What am I supposed to do with this if you can't get it wet? I assume they mean to not put the plug in the water, right? I guess we'll find out. It's a submersible pump, so 
that's an odd disclaimer and makes me kind of uneasy, to be honest. I didn't need anything fancy. The pump just gets used for everything I talked about before, creating some current and noise over there in the water to deter the birds. Also keeps the water turning so that algae doesn't build up and the time that it takes for the pool coming to get out here to like get the plumbing and everything going. I, I don't know how to do that. I think I talked about that. That's that's not in my wheelhouse. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I just worry I'd break something that it would end up costing more money. I just let the professionals do that. And then the other reason that it's good or why I like to have a high velocity pump around is because sometimes during the summer, we have heavy downpours and the backyard floods. And then when the backyard floods, the power goes out to the filter where the pump is that I would use to drain the pool down. So there have been occasions almost every single summer where I have to bust out the big pump, throw it onto a fire hose and pump the water out of the pool and out of the backyard when it floods. So, yeah, it was a great deal. It was like 124 bucks. These things have come way down in price over the years. Came with various size fittings, took to different hoses. This will also create a larger spout, some couplings to attach those into the pump and some gaskets. Fun stuff. Wait, was the last thing I talked about the artichokes? Did I skip something here? I have no idea. I need to go back and look at my memory card. Yep, I left off talking about the artichokes, but I talked about the pump before that. I got them repotted, moved them into just old proven winter containers. There were 10 of the Green Globe artichokes, and then I believe nine of the Red Stars, I think. And I ended up just moving one of the oreganos into a larger container because it was the only one that really seemed like it was rooted enough to move in. The other is going to have to wait like a week or so. Hence the last video, the one that came out before this. And then I filled the rest of that seedling flat up with cuttings, which was in the video prior to this one. So now I'm going to go ahead and toss this in the pool. It's going to be very noisy and loud. And the pool still doesn't have very much water in it because those oh, doesn't work. I knew it was too good to be true. That thing's set up way, way, way too easily. There's a kink somewhere in the line. I can't find it, but it's all hooked up. No water's coming out. Go figure. We'll handle that next. Oh, well... That's really nice. I was expecting a great big geyser. Probably very loud. I'll hold the camera closer to my face. The old one was just a geyser that shot straight up. And if there was a breeze, then it would blow and mist around. This is more pleasant. More of that kind of tulip shape is sometimes what they call those fountain heads that fan out from the middle. I don't mind it. Once there's more water in here, that's of course going to look different. I might have to put a different fitting on top, but this is good. That's not going to blow over the place, going to keep oxygen in the water. It's enough noise and should be enough turbulence to deter the grackle birds from playing around on the steps and pooping all over the pool. I'm happy with it. Turbo, he really enjoys it. He was a lot of help with getting that put in the water. And by a lot of help, I mean total pain in the ass. I found the kink. See how much more water there is in the pool? That took a while and it's raining. So standing here under the umbrella. It took a very long time, but eventually I found it. The kink was where the hose runs underneath the air conditioning units. That's why I couldn't see it, but I managed to kind of loosen it up. The rubber tore the whole hose. I already talked about it. it needs to be replaced, but it's good enough. Got the water level up. So I'm going to go inside and find that safety ramp. Also, I ran a quick errand. I just, I popped by a local nursery because I needed another flight of pansies need needed. I wanted another flat of pansies that were something other than just the yellow and the yellow and purple for some things I'm doing in my backyard. If you don't know, the flat right here and then the one, there's one over there, and the lettuce, those are for planters I'm doing at a family member's house. And while I was at the nursery, I picked up a jasmine. I haven't grown a jasmine in such a long time. Fantastic plants. Smells absolutely amazing. I potted it up in this kind of weathered white container here. Might throw some decorative moss on top of that. I think it's still just a smidge too chilly to keep it outside. So I'll probably take that in. And then look at these tulips. Aren't those just stinking adorable tulips? They're so tiny. Look how little they are. Little bitty mini tulips for spring container. I'm not going to put these in a spring container. I was going to say to use these in spring containers, but I think they're going to be finished blooming fairly quickly. Some tulips, they don't hold on their flowers too terribly long, so I don't now, I don't think that they'll make it into a, an arrangement, but I did grab another one that doesn't have as many flowers on it that hasn't progressed as far. So this one still has some time, so that might make it into a little spring something. These are just so stinking cute. Aren't they pretty? Very, very pretty tulips. So I realized I was probably talking way too quietly there with the background noise of the fountain and then the rain and everything. It's just, 
I always forget every year, you get that fountain on, I gotta raise my voice and change how I do things. And then here are the pansies I picked up to use in my own backyard. Very pretty. Look at that one. No, 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 no. Look at this one. That's a beautiful pansy. Okay, we're all caught up. Water's in the pool. I need to go find that ramp. I'm going to go in the grow space. Talk about what's going on in there. Oh, here's that ramp. There's this weighted bean bag that sits on top of the pool. And then this piece floats in the water. You can get that put in the pool, save the critters. That will make sense in a couple of weeks. There is a reason, I promise. Isn't that a pretty pansy? Look at it. It's lovely. <laughs> Artichokes are currently sitting on the ground. I had to pull them off the shelves to give them a water. They're looking a little bit rough because I was kind of behind with getting them repotted. I haven't separated them out just yet. I want to give them a chance to take root and get moving. Then I'll decide which ones are the keepers and which ones need to go so that there aren't too many plants in each container. But they're still, their growth is nice and sturdy. There's just some yellowing and some things that need to be cut off from being repotted. This is the shelf that they've been on. I think I'm going to remove this because I, they might be a little bit too close to the light. I think they'd appreciate being down lower. Calathea update, I moved these over to the shelf last week and they're looking pretty good. Haven't really seen much change in them except that they're leaning towards the light. So I talked about last week how I wasn't certain if this grow light might be too much for them, but I don't think it is. I could probably go ahead and scoot those a little bit further and not much to report with the heliconias a little bit of growth in there but not a ton i have dialed the temperature down in here because uh, i need to get the plants ready to go outside probably late april early may somewhere in there so right now hovering at around 73 and i'm letting it drop into the 60s at night time i've been really really busy with some other things some family things and when the temperatures are higher in here, I have to water very, very, very frequently. And it was getting to a point where I was like, all right, I'm having some trouble keeping up with things. So just dial it down. This is probably better anyway, since they need to get adjusted so that they can get moved outside. When they go out, temperatures will probably be in like the 50s at night and then uh, mid 70s to mid 80s during the day, somewhere in there. So that's about where things are in here, but I just wanted to kind of back off just a smidge. It was very warm in here, and I, that's partially because things have changed outside, so I'm like still kind of learning the dance with the heater. And when it's in the 50s and 60s outside, if I have that set at like 80, then it ends up being like 85 or 90, so I'm still adjusting. Ideally, I'm going to want to get this into a range that's probably low around... 68 to 70 with a high of 77. I really would prefer the plants to be around 77 degrees. I'm just still figuring out how to gauge that heater with the insulation and the airflow, all that stuff. The fish are doing well. They seem happy eating all that fun stuff. I haven't potted the plants up just yet because I'm still waiting for the driftwood to finish releasing its tannins. But as soon as that's done, you get things potted up in here, planted up. This yucca here, I normally would move this out with the other plants, but I noticed that it was having some floppiness here in the middle, and I had this placed over back there behind the croton. So I decided to move it over here onto the table for right now, where it's going to get much more intense light, can get more water because there's more airflow and it's warmer over here than it is over there. Try and get those leaves perked back up and get the plant more sturdy before taking it outside. The yuccas, I really don't water them very much during the winter, so it's only been splashed here and there occasionally. But I want to see better, sturdier, healthier growth up there before taking outside. The temperatures are still dropping to the 30s. I'm sure we'll still have nights in the 20s and in the teens even. Probably even some snow and ice. So they need to be able to handle that. I don't, I don't want to put it through that. Um, the treat for, yeah. It doesn't look too good. I've been watering it, but apparently it just got too dry and it went bloof, shriveled down. I actually pulled this one from its container, added some more soil in that would hold on to more moisture, and it's already responded very well to that. Has new growth coming out, but all that happened just absolutely out of nowhere. I didn't realize it needed to be watered. I had checked the plants to see if they need to be watered over there on the shelves the night before this happened, and they felt okay and looked fine, and then... Well, that happened. That was also a very warm day out here, which was another reason that I decided to dial the temperatures back somewhat so that I could manage things some more. But things got a little bit chaotic. Okay, 
The mule palms. Not going to move them out yet. They can take a lot of cold. I think that temperature-wise, these would be fine. I say these. There's one here and there's another one over there behind that shriveled up oleander. They can take a good amount of colds, like a lot of cold. They're very cold hardy, but they've been in here where it's been in the 70s and 80s for the last couple of months, really, I think. Yeah, about, a, about two months. I just don't want to shock them, so I'm going to hold off just like probably for another week, maybe two, because I want to see that forecast a little bit further. So like I said, I'm not too worried about the cold, but if we do have snow and ice, these are, they've gotten pretty big. They're not the easiest plants to move around at this point. I don't want to unnecessarily stress them out when that another cold front comes moving through here because there will be more. It was a beautiful week, but there will be colds. Oh, hey, Monstera. Putting out some new growth from down below and look at this, got another one coming up right in there. This is almost an immediate response. Let's say within 48, 72 hours of dropping the temperature down. So that's another good sign. I just don't think I was able to keep up with the amount of water the plants needed when it was that warm in here. So keeping them better hydrated in the mid 70s is what I'm aiming for. I think I said that, I don't know. But that should get better growth out of them that way. Hopefully that's that's the plan, just to find out, but so far seems pretty good. I can get that put in the water, see how that works. Little weighted bean bag and a platform so the animals can jump on there and get out of the water should they fall in. They seem to appreciate, I actually, I see frogs and things sit on it during the summertime, so. Yeah, the water's still, I mean, it's, it's a mess. The filter's not running. I would say it's still much nicer to look at than the cover. Daffodils seem to appreciate the heat. Look at them. They're looking beautiful. All opened up, the beautiful yellow, happy flowers, those water spots. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. I have the cage around this, if you didn't know, if you're newer here, to keep the puppy, <laughs> giant 90 pound puppy, from digging up the bulbs that I had planted here. I could probably take this off now. Eh, it doesn't look so hot having that cage there, but the puppy, he likes to dig any place where I've used any sort of organic fertilizer or compost, which is what was around those when they were planted. Maybe I should pull it up. No, I don't want to. Gonna stay there for just a little bit longer. Need to do some training with him, do some walking around the garden beds on a leash and start to teach him where he can and can't go. He's definitely old enough to know that by now. Wasn't really much point in doing that during the winter with the snow and everything. It was very confusing. I tried. He just wasn't, wasn't really picking up on it because everything just sort of looked the same. But there are more defined areas out here now. So I'm going to try and get on top of that. Oh, it smells so fantastic out here. I love the sweet aroma from a jasmine plant. I think that I've done about everything that I can get done this week. Maybe it didn't seem like I got a lot of things done but really that the pool thing that took a few hours and the water stuff was more of a nightmare than I expected but easier than in years past. All good things I'm glad to have done. So comment down below say hi what's everybody up to happy spring. I guess today technically when the video comes out isn't the first day of spring it's the day after but we're just gonna roll with it and we're gonna say happy spring especially with the weather that's been going on. Feels like spring to me. Comment down below say hi. I love talking to everybody. What do y'all got going on in your gardens? Getting things rolling? There isn't a ton that can be done here other than clean up and some pruning. That's about it. Pansies should be good to go into the ground and into the containers. Lettuce kale, cabbage, those things are probably okay. There's not a ton to do just yet. We're almost there though. Thanks for hanging out. It was a fun week. So excited to be back outside. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.